Good morning. Today we are going to review inductance for AP Physics C electricity and magnetism. Flippin' Physics! Our review of inductance starts with a basic circuit with a battery, a resistor, and a switch. Before time t equals zero, the switch in the circuit is open and zero current flows through the open loop. At time t equals zero, the switch is closed and remains closed. A current I, which is clockwise from this perspective, is now in the circuit. Up to this point, we have assumed the current appears instantaneously in the circuit. However, in the real world, nothing changes instantaneously. The current cannot go from zero to I without taking some time to get from zero to I. So let's look at what really happens when the switch closes. Actually, Bo, what do you think happens when the switch closes? When the switch closes, current flows, right? I think he is implying it takes time for the current to transition from zero to the current through the circuit, which makes sense, but why? We know current is moving charges, and moving charges create magnetic fields, right? Okay, so according to the right-hand rule, thumb... Up. Don't be too cool! <clears throat> yeah. And I'm using my right hand. Uh, thumb points in the direction of the current, which is clockwise from this perspective. In the top wire, that direction is to the right. So thumb points to the right with the current there. Fingers curl with the magnetic field. That means the magnetic field is out of the screen, above the top wire, and into the screen below the top wire. Actually, if you look at all the wires, that means the magnetic field created by the current in the loop is out of the screen outside the loop and into the screen inside the loop. But why does that matter? Remember, Faraday's law states that an induced EMF is created when magnetic flux changes. Oh, right. The, the induced EMF equals the negative of the number of loops times the derivative of the magnetic flux through one loop with respect to time. And before the switch is closed, there is zero current in the circuit, so zero magnetic flux through the loop. And after the switch is closed, the current in the circuit has created magnetic flux through the loop. So there, there must be an induced EMF in the circuit caused by the change in the magnetic flux through the circuit loop. <laughs> there absolutely is. And now, Billy, please use Lenz's law to determine the direction of the induced current that would go along with that induced EMF. Use Lenz's law to, to determine the direction the induced current would be in the loop. Well, initially there is zero magnetic flux through the circuit loop. Finally, there is a magnetic field which is into the screen inside the loop. Therefore, the magnetic flux is increasing. Good point, Billy. Please remember, only the magnetic field which passes through the inside of the loop causes magnetic flux through the loop. Lenz's law states that an induced magnetic field is created to counteract the change in magnetic flux. Therefore, the induced magnetic field is out of the screen. Using the alternate right-hand rule, looking at the wire on the left, fingers curl out of the screen inside the loop. That means an induced current would be down in the wire on the left, so an induced current would be counterclockwise in the loop from this perspective. Okay, so this is why the, the current in the circuit does not instantly change from zero to I. The current in the circuit takes time to transition from zero to I because the circuit itself opposes the change in current. Exactly, Billy. Closing the switch causes a change in the magnetic flux in the circuit loop. That changing magnetic flux induces an EMF in the circuit, which is opposite the direction of the electric potential difference across the battery. And the induced current, which would be in the circuit caused by this change in mag magnetic flux, would be opposite in direction to the current in the circuit caused by the battery. The effect of this is that it slows the down the change in the current from zero to I. This opposition of a circuit to a change in current in that same circuit is called self-inductance. The more general concept of the opposition to a change in current in a conductor is called inductance. So inductance is the opposition of a conductor to its change in current, and self-inductance is the opposition of a circuit to its own change in current? Hey, I usually repeat what Mr. P says. Yeah. 
but you were too slow. That's not fair. All right. To get to the equation for inductance, we need to return to the simple circuit example and the basic concept of Faraday's law. Induced EMF is proportional to change in magnetic flux with respect to time. The magnitude of magnetic flux equals the magnetic field times the area of a loop times the cosine of the angle between the direction of the magnetic field and the direction of the loop area. Assuming the area and angle are not changing with respect to time, which is a reasonable assumption for a circuit, the induced EMF is proportional to the change in the magnetic field with respect to time. An example of a magnetic field around a current carrying wire is the one which surrounds an infinitely long current carrying wire, which we derived previously. That magnetic field equals the magnetic permeability of free space times current all divided by the quantity 2 pi times A, where A is the straight line distance perpendicular out from the wire to the location of the magnetic field. For a specific location, everything in that equation, with the exception of current, is constant. This means the induced EMF in a conductor is proportional to change in current in the conductor with respect to time. So, I've been able to show that inductance, in general, is proportional to the time rate of change of current in a conductor. This brings us to the equation for the inductance of an inductor. An inductor is a circuit element with a known inductance. The equation for the inductance of an inductor is the induced EMF of an inductor equals the negative of the inductance of the inductor, capital L, times the derivative of current with respect to time. The simplest version of an inductor is a small ideal solenoid. Because a solenoid is in the shape of a coil, the symbol for an inductor looks like the coils of a miniature solenoid. Bobby. Please determine the units for inductance. The units for inductance. Well, first we need to rearrange that equation to solve for inductance. Inductance equals the negative of the induced EMF over the derivative of current with respect to time. The units for inductance then are volts divided by amps per second. So inductance is in volt seconds per amp. Yep. And the special name for those are Henry's, capital H. The symbol for inductance is capital L, and the units for inductance are capital H for Henry's. Who's repeating Mr. P now? I am. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. At this point, I want to take a moment to make sure we specifically identify the differences between resistance, resistors, resistivity, inductance, self-inductance, and inductors. Billy. Start by talking about the differences between resistance, resistors, and resistivity. Well, resistance is an opposition to current, and it equals electric potential difference divided by current. That means resistance is a, a concept. The units for resistance are ohms, and the symbol for ohms is a capital omega, which looks like an upside-down horseshoe. And we often assume the resistance of a circuit is zero because we generally assume all wires have zero resistance. On the other hand, a resistor is a circuit element with a specific resistance. That, that means a resistor is a physical object, unlike resistance, which is a concept. Capital R is the variable we use for the resistance of a resistor. A resistor is made out of a material which has a material property called resistivity. Resistivity, lowercase rho, equals resistance times cross-sectional area, all divided by resistor length. The units for the material property resistivity are ohm meters. The symbol for a resistor is often a zigzag wire shape. A resistor can be added to a circuit to change the resistance of the circuit. Actually, we could even add a resistor to a circuit diagram to model the resistance of the circuit, its, its circuit itself. Would that be called self-resistance? Like self-inductance? Interesting question, Billy. As far as I know, there is no such term as self-resistance for the resistance of a circuit itself. Maybe there should be. Bo, please talk about inductance, self-inductance, and inductors. Sure. Inductance is in opposition to changes in current, which is a concept. Inductance equals the negative of the induced EMF over the time rate of change of current. The units for inductance are Henry's, capital H. 
The opposition of a circuit to the change in the current in that circuit is called self-inductance, which again is a concept. The self-inductance of a circuit is often, often assumed to be zero. An inductor is a circuit element, which is a with a specific inductance, which makes an inductor a physical object. Capital L is the inductance of an inductor named in honor of Lentz. A typical shape for an inductor is a small ideal solenoid. A typical circuit symbol for an inductor is a small coil. There is no material property called inductivity because inductance of an inductor is mostly caused by the shape, not the material of the inductor. Right. A magnetic material in its core can affect the inductance through its magnetic permeability, but not the material of the wire coil. Sure. An inductor can be added to a circuit to change the inductance of the circuit, and an inductor can be added to a circuit diagram to model the self-inductance of the circuit itself. Wow, Billy and Bo, that was impressive, thanks. You are welcome. Thanks. Considering the most common shape for an inductor is a small ideal solenoid, Let's look at that case specifically. We have two different equations for induced EMF. Faraday's law, which states that induced EMF equals the negative of the number of loops times the derivative of the magnetic flux through one loop with respect to time. And the induced EMF across an inductor equals the negative of inductance times the derivative of current with respect to time. Everybody brought negative one over dt to the party. Everybody Recall that capital N is the total number of loops or coils in the solenoid shaped inductor. Now we can take the integral of both sides. Both the total number of loops and the inductance of the inductor are constants and can be taken out from their integrals. The limits of both of these are from zero to their final variables of magnetic flux and current. The integral of one with respect to magnetic flux is just magnetic flux, and the integral of one with respect to current is just current. We can solve that for the inductance of a solenoid, and we can substitute in the equation for the magnitude of magnetic flux, which equals magnetic field times loop area times the cosine of the angle between the direction of the magnetic field and the loop area. In an ideal solenoid, the angle between the magnetic field and the loop area vector is always zero degrees. We now have that the inductance of a solenoid equals the magnetic field times the quantity number of loops times cross-sectional area divided by current. Bobby, what is the equation we derived in a previous lesson for the magnetic field inside an ideal solenoid? Uh, the, um, uh... The, the magnetic field inside an ideal solenoid equals the magnetic permeability of free space times the turn density times the current through the solenoid. And, oh, and uh, turn density equals uppercase N, the number of loops, divided by some sort of curly symbol. What's that? That is a curly L, and it stands for the length of the ampere and loop or a rectangle we use to determine the magnetic field. And actually, capital N is defined as the number of loops inside the ampere N loop. Um, if we make the size of the ampere N rectangle cover the whole length of the solenoid, then capital N is the total number of loops in the solenoid, just like we defined capital N earlier. And curly L is the length of the whole ideal solenoid, so rather than curly L, let's use capital L. That is not the best idea. Oh, yeah. Capital L means inductance. Let's leave it as the curly L. However, we know it is the length of the whole solenoid. Right, and let's not confuse that with capital L for a resistor, which is the length of the resistor. We're kind of terrible with symbols. Yeah. yeah. And going back to the equation for the inductance of a solenoid, we can substitute the equation for the magnetic field inside an ideal solenoid into that. Current inside the solenoid cancels out, 
and we get that the inductance of an ideal solenoid equals the magnetic permeability of free space times the square of the number of turns times cross-sectional area, all divided by the length of the solenoid. <laughs> nice. Well done. Let's take a moment to recognize what determines the inductance of an ideal solenoid. Number of turns, cross-sectional area, solenoid length, and the magnetic permeability of the space or core material inside the solenoid. For an ideal solenoid with nothing inside it, that equals the magnetic permeability of free space. When the solenoid has a material in its core, like iron, mu naught is replaced with mu, the magnetic permeability of the core material. Oh, wait, wait a second. Inductance does not depend on the current through the solenoid? Nope. Resistance does not depend on current either. You know what, that, that actually does make sense. The geometry of a solenoid does not depend on the current going through it, so its inductance should not depend on current either. Yep. All right. Next. Let's derive the equation for the energy stored in the magnetic field generated in an inductor as charge moves through the inductor. To do that, we need to discuss the basics of an LR circuit. This LR circuit is a circuit with an inductor, a resistor, a battery, and a switch. Initially, when time t is less than zero, the switch is open. At time t equals zero, the switch is closed and stays closed. The current increases from zero to some steady state current, capital I. We are not going to derive the time dependent equations for LR circuits today. We will do that in future lessons. Billy, for time T is greater than or equal to zero, please apply Kirchhoff's loop rule starting in the lower left hand corner. Absolutely. So the switch has been closed. Kirchhoff's loop rule states that the electric potential difference around a closed loop equals zero. Moving clockwise around the circuit from this perspective, first we get to the battery and we add the EMF of the battery because the electric potential goes up when going from the negative to the positive terminals of the battery. The battery is adding electric potential energy to the circuit. We subtract the electric potential difference across the inductor because, as you said, electric potential energy will be stored in the magnetic field of the inductor, and therefore the electric potential will go down in the direction of the current in the circuit. We also subtract the electric potential difference across the resistor in the direction of the current in the circuit because the resistor converts electric potential energy to heat and sometimes sound and light. And please substitute in equations for the electric potential differences across the inductor and the resistor. Okay. For the inductor, the induced EMF equals negative inductance times the time rate of change of current. But we do not include the negative again in that equation because we already showed that the electric potential goes down across the inductor with the negative in the Kirchhoff's loop rule equation. And the electric potential difference across a resistor equals current times resistance. Thank you, Billy. Now we solve that equation for the EMF across the battery, and then, and then multiply the whole equation by the current in the circuit. Now let's talk about what this equation represents. Starting with the left-hand side, current through the battery times the EMF across the battery. Anybody have any ideas what that is? Current through the battery times the EMF across the battery. Uh, that's electric power. We have three equations for electric power, and one of them is current times electric potential difference. So current times EMF is the rate at which the battery is adding energy to the circuit, and current squared times resistance is the rate at which energy is being dissipated by the resistor. Does that mean that inductance times current times the rate of change of current is the rate at which energy is being stored in the magnetic field of the inductor? That would make sense. That is exactly correct. Each of those expressions refers to the power for each of our circuit elements. If you recall, our goal is to derive an equation for the energy stored in the magnetic field generated in an inductor as charge moves through the inductor. So let's isolate the equation for the power of the inductor. Power equals inductance times current times the derivative of current with respect to time. Recall that power is the derivative of energy with respect to time. Everybody brought the inverse of dt to the party. Everybody brought mass. 
Bo, from here, please derive the equation for the energy stored in the magnetic field generated in an, in an inductor by the charges moving through the inductor. Sure. Well, we can take the integral of both sides. The limits of both integrals start at zero and end at their final variables of energy stored in the inductor and current. The integral of one with respect to energy is just the energy stored in the inductor. On the right-hand side, inductance of the inductor is constant, so that can be taken out from the integral. The integral of current with respect to current is current squared over 2. Considering, considering the limits go from 0 to current in the inductor, the energy stored in the magnetic field in an inductor equals 1 half times inductance times the square of the current in the inductor. Thank you, Bo. We just derived an equation for the energy stored in the magnetic field generated in an inductor as charges move through the inductor. Please realize that energy is only present when current is passing through the inductor. This is because the magnetic field generated in the inductor is due to the charges moving through the inductor. If the charges are not moving, there is no magnetic field in the inductor. Realize this is different from how a capacitor functions. The energy stored in a capacitor is stored in the electric field of the capacitor. We have three equivalent equations for that. Billy, what are they? Uh, the, energy, the energy stored in a capacitor oh yeah, uh, equals charge squared divided by two times capacitance, one half capacitance times electric potential difference squared, and one half charge times electric potential difference. And that is different from an inductor because the energy stored in a capacitor can remain when a capacitor is disconnected from a circuit because the charges can remain separated on the plates of the capacitor, which would maintain the electric field between the plates of the capacitor, even when it is disconnected from a circuit. But the magnetic field in an inductor is not there when there is no current passing through the inductor. Exactly. Thanks. And thank you for learning with me today. I enjoy learning with you.